Okay, maybe we go now. All right, I think we are live and I am gonna be double checking to make sure it is live. All right, we are live on Facebook, ladies. Welcome. All right, there's the button. There was a magic button that I was still waiting for. So welcome everyone, good afternoon. It is 4.03, so we are three minutes, a little late on the live, but that's okay. My name is Dani Aguilar and I am from the YDC here in Yakima. I do our community outreach and education work for our agency. I've been here for seven years. And this month we get the privilege to be with a lot of community providers in our area of Yakima City and Yakima County and outside of course on the outskirts of our Yakima Nation. So today in light of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we are doing an informational series. And today starts the first day. We are here gathered with two individuals, beautiful women from our Yakima Nation uh, Victim Resource Program. First, I'm gonna introduce Ms. Ariel Adams, who is a Victim Support Specialist, and also Ms. Crystal Esquivel, who is also part of the victim nation, Yakima Nation Victim Resource Program. Well, wow. okay. So my goal on this live is not to be the one speaking at all times, because I want to make sure that these ladies can help you guys in guidance and really have you guys connect any families or individuals that are in need of any service programming, uh, specifically in our Yakima Nation area. But of course, if there's some connection that any of our specialists from that space can make, to other providers, I would imagine they would be so much happy to do so. So I'm gonna take, kind of jump off to the next and leave you off to the mic. I don't know if Ms. Crystal or Ariel would like to kind of introduce yourself first, and then we'll jump in with your roles at the agency. What does your program provide? How do people reach out to you? Is there any specific criteria? Let's take it away. I'm gonna be checking on the chat for any questions or comments that are made. So, um, good afternoon. My name is Crystal Esquivel. I am the project specialist for the Victim Resource Program. And I've been working with the Victim Resource Program for about five years now. Um, I was part of the of building the infrastructure of the program. So it's gone a long ways from since we first started because we really just kind of build from the ground up. Um, but uh, part of what our mission statement is that the Yakima Nation Victim Resource Program is to support and identify the needs of victims of crime and the Yakima Nation community through a comprehensive approach that integrates uh, mental health to address historical and interpersonal trauma. Um, we also assist victims of crime through advocacy, referral services, and education to create stability through awareness, intervention, and healings. Um, we help all, all victims of crime but we focus on domestic violence, sexual assault, um, sexual abuse, stalking, dating violence, and human trafficking. Um, the victim-centered activities will entail culturally competent services for mental health, substance abuse, physical and emotional abuse. Um, part of our part of the our, the way we provide our direct services is we try to go through a trauma-informed care approach which a lot of our staff has been trained for. Um, the eligibility is we help Native American descendants, women, men, children, elders, and adolescents, as well as our LGBTQ two-spirit community, and even families who have been victims of survivors of violent crimes. Um, more, more than that, we also provide MMIW assistance. Um, this is fairly new to our program as first we began, we began with awareness um, and education and we seen that it was such a high need um, from our community members that we are trying to work on a toolkit to address the needs to an MM, our MMIW committee. Um, it is still in the works right now, but once we have everything set, set out, um, we, would, we would send out uh, like a flyer letting the letting the community know that um, MMIW help is available through our program. Uh, 
and how how you guys can contact our program. Um, our office hours is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are currently not a crisis center at the moment, but it is something that we are working on. Um, we're hoping to be a 24 seven um, service provider in the new future. We um, just need to work on getting it approved. And when, when that happens, um, we have this unique position that Ariel's in and she'll be able to explain what her role is, which is very awesome. And is something that we are super excited about. But our contact information um, is, you can contact us at our front desk, which is 509. 8640515. Uh, that's the front desk to the our behavioral health. And for the VRP front desk, it's 509-864-0937. And our backup number is 509-865-2266. Um, our off, our again, our office hours are 8 to 5 p.m. and our address is 18 West First Avenue in Toppenish, Washington. Um, if anyone has any questions about more about our services, um, you can add them in the chat box. And Ariel, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Hi, my name is Ariel Adams. I'm the victim support specialist for the Action Nation Victims Resource Program. Um, like Crystal was saying earlier, my position is kind of new to our program. We received funding in 2019 um, from the Office of Victims of Crime to kind of branch our services into um, our tribal police program. And so with my role, um, we've been given the opportunity to provide um, victim-centered services um, alongside our tribal police officers. So kind of what that looks like was in the beginning, we kind of built our partnership with our uh, tribal police officers, and um, that started by allowing me to have an office within our police department and um, and work directly with our chief of police and lieutenant as well. And then, so kind of furthering the development of the program, eventually I will actually be able to respond in field with the law enforcement officers to different crime scenes and things like that, where there may be victims that we can provide emergency services to. Um, the position would be outside of the hours of eight to five um, and kind of just as needed as the officers may um, need me on a scene, if that makes sense. And then the other way I kind of work with the officers is by working with the detectives um, who have ongoing cases, whether that be um, federal cases or our local tribal cases. I am just in awe right now, ladies, and I'm just going to be on the voices to make sure that um, that I can direct any other questions. But can we please repeat that information again, Crystal, or if you can help me add it to the chat so I can send it to our viewers on Facebook. I know it's not coming directly off Zoom. So if that's okay with you, Crystal, do you mind just sharing that, that information, how they can contact your office? Is there a specific number to the main office or what is the safest way they can reach you guys? Um, yes, I can do that. Uh, I can add that in the, the chat box. Um, the main way to get in contact is in contact is using the 509-865-2266 um, number because that's our most reliable number. Um, what, the one thing that we do struggle with is um, we have poor internet connection. Um, so because our, our building is brick and cement, so it's hard to get that um, signal coming in. So we also do have a Facebook page. It's called um, the Victim Resource Program. And that's another way to get in contact with us as well. Um, again, I can put that in that in the put that information in the chat box. Um, we also we do have seven advocates um, available to help our community. Um, each advocate plays a specific role and are all trained. To, to serve those who, who need our assistance. Um, we, we provide a variety of services. So I encourage um, community members to just ask for help, ask us for anything that you need. It can be, we can try to make it possible. If not, we can also look for resources in our surrounding areas. Um, I'm trying to look for the, the chat box. Oh, here it is. 
So I will add that in. And um, we, another thing that we have with, within our program is we have Ashley Whitefoot, who is building the infrastructure of a domestic violence shelter. And at the time, um, at the time she's still looking to secure a facility that will meet the needs of providing shelter to clients and their families, and um, that she will provide office space for advocates as well once the building is um, set in place. So we are looking for other tribal programs as well as the city of Toppenish and looking into potential locations. Um, our goal is to provide temporary shelter to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, dating violence, stalking, and victims of crime that offers wraparound advocacy, that offers wraparound advocacy services to individuals and community of Native American and Alaska Natives who are seeking shelter. Um, we also want to provide an environment where, where culture healing is promoted. And um, another thing too that the Victim Resource Program services provide is cultural healing. And with that, we have a cultural specialist that we, that we contracted and our cultural specialist can help um, our clients who are interested in, in, um, in, in like, like meditation and prayer through our traditional ways, um, if they're interested, but that's something that, that we do offer. So that way um, we can provide some, some comfort and uh, emotional support to our, to our clients as well. And I will start typing in our information. All right. So Ariel, I have a question for you um, specifically, if that's okay. Are you, is there any, um, any targeted group that you're, that you will be focusing in on? Like, will you be working with young people or is majority of your population or targeted like individuals and groups, adults? Would you be able to answer that question? Online to like your new work that you have and welcome to the team. Like what's the project gonna look like? Um, so my kind of, I don't really have like an age range for my service population. It's kind of just based off of needs. Um, and it's not even really crime specific because with my grant, I was, we were allowed to kind of open our services up to um, elder abuse, children abuse, um, fraud, like identity theft, um, homicide. So supporting families who have just lost somebody from homicide, um, vehicular crimes as well. And like, uh, of course, with like domestic violence and sexual assault and um, trafficking and stuff like that, we um, will also provide. So there's no actual specific um, age range. Um, I've had, I have had met with children and then also elderly as well. So it's just kind of based on um, the interactions that the officers have with our community and they identify as needing services. All right, thank you for clarifying. So Crystal, I also did have a program question. Uh, how long have you guys been in, um, in the, I mean, in the space where you guys are at? You guys located in Top Anish, or where specifically is your agency located? How long have you guys been in, in the county? Um, we, we are located in Top Anish, Washington. Um, we've been open for about five years now. I would say fully open about four and a half years now. Um, before our program, there was a domestic violence program, but it was geared in a different direction from what we're doing now. Right now, we're focused on victim-centered and uh, more through a trauma-informed care approach, which makes it really different and unique from what was done in the past. And um, yeah, we're, we're, st we're still hoping to improve our services and enhance um, our services as well and try to be as available as much as we can to our community. And um, the one thing that has been really awesome is building that bridge and that gap on um, building a relationship with our law enforcement. Um, Ariel and I have been working on um, a meet and greet, which Ariel can explain more on because she's, um, she's the one who's ahead in coordinating it. 
So um, it's actually starting, it, the event will be actually next week um, on the Wednesday the 27th. Um, so it's kind of like due to COVID restrictions in our tribe kind of being in a different phase in the state, um, it's kind of like the events that you normally see like in Yakima where it's like coffee with a cop and things like that. Um, but due to COVID, we had to kind of re-tier that to um, kind of doing a drive-through type of event where the community is able to make, um, like I have a positive reaction or a positive interaction with our tribal police officers. Currently right now, um, majority of the time when um, they interact with them, it's not necessarily on a positive note. It's either um, because they called them or somebody called the police on them. And so we're trying to really increase those uh, positive community interactions with our uh, tribal police department. So the whole idea behind the event is to give the officers the opportunity to kind of connect to the community by feeding them, but then also having um, small conversations with them um, while they're getting their food. And then we're also, the Victims Resource Program will be handing out resources, um, specifically like our information and how to contact us and um, who qualifies and who's eligible for our services um, at that time as well. That's great. I think uh, um, it's important to for our community to note that you know there is collaborations happening. There is uh, programming providers that are helping to bridge those bridge those those needs, but specifically to those that are being impacted by any forms of crime or any forms of like gender violence. I think that's important for our community to know that you know we're working towards, and then your team is working towards getting and improving those efforts. Um, I do have a question here for um, you know for you guys, or I can also jump in. Um, are you guys able to share like how many people are impacted um, by DV in correlation to um, stories that that we know, especially in our area, of our missing people? Is that something you guys are able to share um, today with us? Um. So we don't really have the data on that just yet. And that's something that we're hoping to work on. Um, it kind of becomes a little tricky for us at times to share information because of the Yakima traditions um, of having to ask permission from, from family members. Um, but part of the underlying issues of MMIW does involve domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, and we do have a few people in our community who, who have been impacted and we're, we are actually creating a, a task force with our uh, MMIW special committee council members. And with that, um, we can discuss more on the issue at, at an event that we'll be hosting soon. Um, I, there's not much I can say right now because everything's right now is like in the planning stages. But um, some like as far as the stories, it's something that I would first want to get approval from families to to share them. Yes, absolutely. And if your team does have an event that will be open for a community, like if this is a conversation, because I know we have a big interest in hearing the stories. I know there's a really great link. Um, from the vanish and I know we shared that on our page of how they can kind of go in and kind of read through those story stories so if any of you guys in the community have a chance to get through some of those stories I think it would create a big impact and really give you that insight and that close picture that it's a it's a big impact of what's happening in our communities and how many individuals are and are still missing um, from our familias from our families from our communities from our areas rural or not rural um so yeah absolutely do let us know if there's an event coming up that can be open for people to join uh for people to uh, be part of that conversation because i think we we have a lot more interest and in people wanting to be aware and needing to hear what's what's happening how can i help or um you know if somebody is gone missing or a loved one from a friend of mine i want to be able to know how to support them for sure. Um, I know that for May 5th, we always try to make do an event. And um, once we we have any, we have like a date and time location. Right now, um, we're in the up in the air too, if we're going to do virtual or in person. It just kind of depends on where we're at, where we're at in the phases, because 
it can change any moment. Um, so as we get closer to that date, we'll for sure um, send you information of that as well. And it'll also be on our social media. Great. And I don't know if you guys already answered this question, but I'm going back to a live chat. Uh, there was a question um, if all of your resources in this program are um, only open as far as criteria goes for um, members who are enrolled. Um, it's it's open to anyone who is a is affiliated with any federal recognized tribe. They can be descend. They can um, the individual individual can be descendants, and uh, we try to make it as as um, wide as possible. Such as if they have children who are descendants or enrolled or recognized from a an, a, a recognized tribe, then we will accept them as well even if the parent doesn't have a affiliation with the tribe. Great, thank you for answering that. I think um, I'm just kind of going back to make sure that we're not missing any other question on there. And oh, are any of your services uh, a cost to anyone who reaches out to you guys? No, our services are free. And then for your office line, um, like for instance, if somebody does call regarding um, immediate crisis situation, I know you said you guys are not specifically um, like a crisis center. Is everything that they share with you confidential? Yes. Um, so every everything that um, that is discussed between the advocate and the client is held confidential. Um, all of our advocates are HIPAA trained as well. Um, we do have a, a safe space there available and um, we, we really, confidentiality is our biggest priority as well. Um, can I speak on that as well? Um, so <laughs> so because I um, work with the tri tribal police, my confidentiality still falls underneath um, the HIPAA training as well. So if I have interactions with the client in the field, it's not privileged information to the officers, if that makes sense. Um, so even if I am responding in field, um, confidentiality is still kept very serious and I'm not obligated to share whatever the client shares with me with the officers. Great, thank you for elaborating on that. Um, I think it's always good for people to know that uh, in case you know they come through a question or something that they feel like wasn't supposed to be released. Um, we kind of have to make sure there's some transparency in that, correct? Um, is there any other program or service that we might have missed that you, any of you, uh, Crystal or Ariel, would love to elaborate on? Um, I, we do have, uh, let's see, we, we, we do partner with our behavioral health services. So if any of our clients are interested in um, going to counseling, we do a referral process to where um, we can connect them to a therapist with our behavioral health, e even if um, if they don't feel comfortable with behavioral health services, then we can help them connect to other resources outside of Yakima Nation. So even like even though we are um, Yakima Nation um, program, we can help outside. We can help find resources outside of Yakima Nation for for individuals who would like to branch out. That's great. Thank you for elaborating. Um, I think I'll give it a, a, I'm going to pause here for a second to see if anything comes into the chat. Um, other than that, I open up a space for you guys to share any messages um, or any impacts that you've seen since pandemic or something that you'd like to share for the audiences of how important it is to be that bridge and just even having a connection to a resource that, you know, maybe we're we're being isolated for so long that we forgotten or just have no way of accessing or accessing or having accessibility. Wow, I said that word three times um, to make that connection right or just build a relationship with someone such as an advocate or someone who's a specialist in this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and feel free to share any message on that at all. If, if, any, if there anything comes to mind. <laughs>
So a message that I do have to share is that um, for anyone out there who is interested in services, you guys, you're not alone. We're here to help you. Um, our services is to provide like individualized um, long-term support to victims and their families. And I should say survivors um, by promoting safety, by promoting safety, stability, and well-being. We do take confidentiality seriously and our number one priority is your safety. We try to have a safety planning for our clients um, at the time of contact, but we, we also kind of just go based on um, where the client is at and especially in, if they're in crisis mode. We do also provide uh, mobile advocacy and can meet clients outside of the office if, if they don't want to, um, if they don't feel comfortable going into our office either. Um, so I, I, I would reach out to our program if, if you need any kind of our, if, if you need our assistance, um, we're here to help. Or would you would you like to add anything to that? Thank you for sharing that, Crystal. No, I think Crystal <laughs> hit it on the head pretty much. Um, she like I, like she said, we're basically here to help anything. Even if you're you're not sure if you qualify for services, you know, just give us a call and we can help you guide you through that whole process. Um, the, you know, our whole entire staff is trained and they really want to help, and we do really care about our community. A lot of us. Are from our community grew up in there and so we really do want what's best for you so if you have any questions about services please don't hesitate to reach out thank you definitely reach out i think um we do we do know we can be afraid sometimes so simply calling a line but you know don't ever be afraid to ask any questions there's no right or wrong question um, or if you need just a support of someone making that call with you like, you know, let a friend know, let a close by neighbor or a trusted adult um, or someone that's really close to you that you've been able to bounce off ideas or just thoughts, um, you know, somebody that you've been leaning on for any help, especially during this pandemic. So I'm gonna pause because our, our life keeps freezing. So I'm gonna see if I can get back to normal. Um, like we said, we don't always trust the connections because you never know. <laughs> I'm going to take a pause to make sure that is on the same page. Okay. okay, so I think we're going to do a close off message before we actually lose everyone on here because of internet connections. So again, in light of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we thank you guys for joining us, lovely ladies from our Yakima Nation um, Victim Resource Program. Please connect with them. The crisis line numbers are added on there, onto the live. Um, I will also add them onto the YouTube channel so you guys can see other direct line numbers. Um, if you want specific flyers or contact, feel free to send us a message on Messenger or you know, send us an email, whatever that looks like for you, so we can get that handout to you. And we'll hold off for you guys to share any flyers coming up so we can post them on our social media as well to let our community know what is happening. So again, to spark change, we started the conversation here. Um, we need to be openly okay to talk about resources, but also openly talking about domestic violence and all kinds of crime. Um, that is based on gender, um, just really any forms of violence in our community, we need to be able to have that conversation come together as a community, because it takes the whole village to raise a child, but it takes the whole community to know that domestic violence, so sexual assault, any kinds of gender violence crime is preventable 100%. Um, so let's be brave, let's have conversations, ask questions and make those connections happen. So. Once again, Ariel and Crystal, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. I will be closing out the session unless we have any last minute thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns. All right, I think silence says a lot. So again, thank you so much for being part of today's conversation. Um, 
we are going to stop the live streaming, but we will stay on Zoom for those that are attending our Zoom session. So hold on one second.